Hello friends, welcome to Inside Psyche and Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about following five topics. These topics are National Mission for Clean Ganga related to GS3 Environment, Goldilocks Effect related to Economy GS3, then EU Deal on Artificial Intelligence Regulation GS Paper 3 SNT, Climate Change Performance Index GS3 Environment and Green Rising Initiative GS3 Environment. I think mostly all of these topics of today's video about GS3. So few are environment and economy and some are related to SNT. Now we are going to discuss about the first one, National Mission for Clean Ganga. Now, so in this particular issue, we are going to discuss about there was a memorandum of understanding regarding India's India's river, okay, River Cities Alliance as well as the Mississippi River Organization of America regarding the conservation of city rivers. You know that in India, to conserve the rivers which are going through cities, we already formulated an alliance known as River Cities Alliance. Now, let us see. India's National Mission for Clean Ganga, they recently signed Memorandum of Common Purpose with Mississippi River Cities and Town Initiative. Actually, this Mississippi River Cities and Town Initiative, it is about, it is about sustainable maintenance of Mississippi River which goes along almost all 124 cities and towns okay so with them when we are making an agreement with them we can adopt best practices of maintaining the this you know like city rivers that is the main purpose here here national mission for clean ganga it is a registered society very very important registered society not a company society under ministry of jal shakti the main purpose of it is it measures it takes measures to prevent, control and completely eliminate the environment pollution of the river Ganga and it also takes suitable measures to rejuvenate the river Ganga. You know the students, river Ganga's health can be assessed by the presence of the river Gantic river dolphin. You know that. This, you know like this agency, it acts as an implementation wing of the National Ganga River Basin Authority. Actually now, this National Ganga Basin Authority is not there. This was this national river, national, this Ganga River Basin Authority, it was constituted under Environment Protection Act 1986. Now, this NGRBA, now it is dissolved since 2016 in its place. Now, National Council for Rejuvenation, Protection and Management of River Ganga, it is popularly known as National Ganga Council has been established. The structure of this National Mission for Clean Ganga, the structure, it consists of two tier management one is a governing council the other one is the executive committee this executive committee will implement the decision taken under governing council and both of these are headed by the director general of nmgc national mission for clean ganga so this is about the mou memorandum of understanding between these two agencies regarding the conservation of river ganges now the second thing is regarding the economy you know recently rba governor he was saying that Indian economy is perfectly balanced between the inflation as well as economic growth. If, if it is a too much of inflation, then economic growth, the, the, the fruits of the economic growth will don't reach to the people. If low economic growth, then that is also not, an, I mean, it is an issue. So the perfect balance between the economic growth and inflation is there. That is the reason we are not changing the repo rate. That is the observation of the RBA. The perfect condition for anything it may be for living or it may be for the economy the perfect conditions are known as what this you know like goldilocks effect now let's see the rba is saying that growth as well as the inflation now they are having the goldilocks effect on the economy goldilocks effect is the just right things in place not too much not too less that is known as goldilocks effect that is optimal range you know that because earth is providing the goldilocks zone that is the reason life is possible on the earth surface that we have to remember this is a in of course this goldilocks effect it is applicable in various fields such as psychology economics marketing and engineering and various other disciplines this goldilocks pricing okay goldilocks pricing is generally it is one of the most important effect of prominent application this goldilocks pricing is generally it will helps in the development of concepts such as product differentiation comparative pricing and bracketing actually these principles are related to economy and pricing you don't need to worry about that but let's see i'll give some basic overview with the goldilocks pricing with the help of the product differentiation 
the marketing of the products can be improved product differentiation means the how the product is different between the two companies when the product differentiation as well as when it compared with the comparative price that means price wise is also okay then that is in the goldilock region so that marketing of the product can be very successful but here the topic is about economy is in the goldilock region that is what rbi's observation now the third topic is ccpi climate change performance index now let's see this climate change performance index ccpi from here onwards we will call it as ccpi recently on the sidelines of cop 28 the ccpi report has been released okay tell me students where the cop 28 meeting is going on okay and where the cop 29 meeting is going to be held please put your answer in the comment section on the sidelines of cop 28 the ccpi report has been released okay the ccpi report released on the sidelines of cop 28 at dubai according to this ranking india stood at 7th rank in 2024 climate change performance index this performance index it is a scoring system which measures the climate protection performance of countries that means how countries are taking measures to protect the climate okay of course india is performing very well according to this index the india's carbon emissions are less compared to other countries because india's population is very high so when you divide the total carbon emissions by population per capita emissions are low so india's per capita greenhouse emissions are low because of higher population not because of overall reduction in the carbon emissions that you have to understand this was this report is designed to improve the transparency in the international climate politics okay function it helps and it uses as a standard framework to compare the climate performance of around 63 countries and the eu the 63 countries and eu together they account for around 90 percentage of the global greenhouse gas emissions and this climate protection performance index okay it includes four parameters ghg emissions greenhouse gas emissions renewable energy energy use and climate policy that means by using these four indicators it check the performance of countries in these four indicators okay now ranking based on each country rank will be assigned based on the overall score published by german watch the new climate institute and the climate action network these three together publish it publishes on annual basis india's climate actions they were rated as the fourth strongest that means india's efforts are very significant you know that by 2070 we would like to achieve the net carbon zero level as well top performing countries in this report denmark estonia and philippines was performing countries uk usa italy and saudi arabia was at the bottom fourth best ranking in terms of per capita emissions because of the high population already explained in various categories for example greenhouse gas emissions india ranked at the ninth then energy use 10th rank climate policy india rank 10th renewable energy india rank 37 these are some of the individual rankings in various categories and india is on track to meet its intended nationally determined contribution you know that in paris climate agreement all the countries are agreed that they are going to come up on every cop meeting about indcs that means how much they are going to reduce the carbon emissions now india's coal use still india's coal use is not reduced because as technologically we are not that much advanced still we are completely i mean majorly we are depending on the coal the depending on the coal is one of the major source of greenhouse gas emissions which is causing severe air pollution in india you know that some of the worst air polluted cities are present in india and you know how the india capital city delhi is subjected to the air pollution next the fourth one unicef to unveil green rising initiative at cop 28 green rising initiative let's see recently unicef united nation children fund they together with unicef's general limited in collaboration with india's ministry of environment forest and climate change okay unicef generation limited generation unlimited as well as india's ministry they unveiled a new initiative that is known as green rising initiative what is this green rising initiative is all about this green rising initiative is all about encouraging youth okay in in protecting the environment and towards the sustainable development so that the next generation also will carry forward the environment friendly methods that is the main objective of this one the global green rising initiative 
and the Green Rising India Alliance. They mark a collaborative effort involving UNICEF, Generation Unlimited, as well as from India, Yuva campaign, they are going to be involved in this. The main purpose is to encourage the youth in, in reducing the greenhouse gas emissions. That is the main purpose. UNICEF stands for United Nations International Children Emergency Fund. It was established in 1946 and 11th December to provide emergency food and health services to the children and mothers who were suffered from World War II, World War II aftermath. Later, it became a leading source of information regarding the children and children issues. Headquarters present in New York City. This is about information regarding the UNICEF. And the fifth one is regarding the artificial intelligence. Tell me students, recently Google launched one of the artificial intelligence search engine. What is the name of that? Okay, Google's artificial intelligence one. European Union, they are trying to make a policy to regulate AI. So far, India did not have any concrete policy to regulate the AI. Initially, Indian authorities mentioned that they don't have any plans to regulate the AI. But recently, in G20 summit, India, India claimed that they are in the process of making such kind, such kind of policy. European Union policy makers, they agreed that they agreed that they are going to make rules to regulate the artificial intelligence. In 2023, members of European Parliament, they reached a preliminary agreement preliminary agreement regarding making a regulation related to artificial intelligence act this act is going to control high risk ai technologies first eu will identify high risk ai technologies and they will make rules regarding how to regulate ai technologies you know that ai technology is nowadays getting misused and deep fake videos are also being circulated the us so far it did not have any comprehensive ai regulation at the moment China in 2022, they came up that they came up with some regulations and it was the first country to have a nationwide regulations regarding the artificial intelligence. India, Union Minister for Electronics and Information Technology said that the government is not considering any law to regulate the AI. However, in this year G20 summit, India indicated that they might regulate the AI after we are getting to know some of the negative consequences of AI. Officials said that Digital Personal Data Protection Bill, it will apply to AI developer as well. So, AI can be, AI technologies can be used in more responsible manner. That is also one of the solution can be offered by Data Protection Bill. Now, yesterday's video, which statement is not correct about the Jammu Kashmir? Okay, Jammu Kashmir has its own constitution, not now. No decision regarding the disposition of the state of the Jammu and Kashmir can be made by the government of India without the consent of state government, not required. Without state government consent also, the Jammu Kashmir decisions can be taken. Residuary purpose in respect of JNK rest with the state government. No, it rests with the parliament. So, all are incorrect. Answer is D. Next. Today's MCQ. Which of the following tributary of Ganga originates from Nepal Sikkim border and joins Ganga in Bangladesh? Joins Ganga in Bangladesh. Put the right answer. Main question. Why is artificial intelligence one of the key development of 21st century? Why? Discuss government efforts regarding artificial intelligence in India. Okay. What kind of efforts government is taking to regulate artificial intelligence in India? This is the main question. Now, as we reach to the end of this video, let us summarize the topics. In today's video, we discussed about following five topics and this is the detailed analysis of today's current issues. Thank you.